the futuristic-looking T-33 shooting star was born out of the iconic Lockheed P-80, the first jet fighter used operationally by the United States Army Air Forces. Crucial in training pilots to be assigned to mighty fighters such as the McDonnell F-101 Voodoo, Convair F-102 Delta Dagger, or Convair F-106 Delta Dart, the shooting star left an endearing mark in the hearts of hundreds of American pilots. Even so, several foreign nations would use the seemingly harmless training plane for much darker purposes, and its guns would be turned against U.S. forces during a brutal covert operation at the height of the Cold War. A Fearsome Predecessor In the latter days of World War II, the defeated Third Reich continued to hold one advantage, its superb aircraft engineering. A remarkable example was its ability to produce the first operational jet fighter in the world, the ME-262 Schwalbe. Britain and the US were seriously concerned and eager to not be outdone by Nazi Germany, so the US Air Force commissioned Lockheed for a secret task in the summer of 1943 to develop a state-of-the-art jet fighter. However, there was a catch. The aircraft manufacturer only had 150 days to deliver a prototype. After months of excruciating work and planning, Lockheed exceeded expectations, delivering the sleek XP-80 prototype in 143 days. The new jet fighter was named P-80 and would be known as the Shooting Star due to its staggering 600 mile per hour speeds. Ultimately, Lockheed not only fulfilled the deadline, but delivered a marvel of American engineering. With its bullet-shaped airframe, flush rivets, and seamless fuselage, the P-80 was not only a beauty, but also a menacing attack plane, featuring six 50 caliber machine guns and underwing shackles for bombs, a lethal combination of muscle and speed. The Shooting Star could only see limited action before World War II ended, but soon became an absolute game-changer in the Korean War. Over 75% of enemy losses during the first months of the conflict were inflicted by Shooting Stars. By 1950, a P-80 shot down a North Korean MiG-15 in the world's first jet-versus-jet -jet air battle, a feat that held high not only the American jet, but the entire reach of U.S. aerial supremacy. These achievements paved the way for several iterations of the type. The P-80B, equipped with the first ejection seat in U.S. aircraft, the F-94 all-weather interceptor, and a swift and agile chaser plane known as the T-33. Adapted by lengthening the fuselage by slightly more than three feet and adding a second seat, the trainer would outlive all other iterations. Classic Trainer As the Korean War progressed, introducing faster, more powerful jet fighters, jet propulsion became a relatively new technology requiring specialized training. The P-80, which had slowly begun to be replaced by newer aircraft, was the perfect candidate to be transformed into a capable jet fighter trainer for an entirely new generation of American pilots. A great deal of what made the Shooting Star so formidable was its compact size. As such, Lockheed engineers had to find a way to lengthen the fuselage as little as possible, but still enough to fit a new seat, instrumentation, and flight controls. The resulting aircraft was designated the TP-80C, TF-80C, and would officially be named the T-33. The new training jet fighter made its first flight on March 22, 1948, flown by Lockheed test pilot Tony Levere, who officially instituted a new phase in the life of the embattled jet. Production of the trainer ran from 1948 to 1959, and starting in 1949, the U.S. Navy employed the T-33 as a land-based trainer for many of its pilots. The two-seat T-33 proved to be an excellent advanced trainer and has been used for various roles, including drone director and target towing. It was also used to train cadets from the Air Force Academy at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado Springs. From the end of the 1940s to the beginning of the 1960s, the Shooting Star became a vital asset for U.S. pilot training. The aircraft was loved and respected by new pilots and fondly remembered by veterans of several generations many of whom earned their wings thanks to the nimble little jet trainer. Then, after the 60s, the T-33 was slowly replaced by newer, more advanced training aircraft, such as the Cessna T-37 Tweet, 
and the Northrop T-38 Talon. Subsequently, many T-33s were assigned to train McDonnell F-101 Voodoo, Convair F-102, and Convair F-106 Delta Dart pilots, serving as proficiency trainers and practice bogey aircraft, while being fitted with similar equipment to operational fighters. Also, several shooting stars went to Tactical Air Command, where they aided in training F-106 and McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II pilots until they finally retired. The last NT-33 was retired in April of 1997. Still, other shooting stars would continue to fly for decades. Chase Planes In a heartfelt ceremony, Boeing retired its last two T-33 chaser planes on December 4, 2020. The two specially adapted shooting stars had spent the better part of 40 years guaranteeing the safety of all Boeing commercial airplanes during their delicate first flights. The stunning chaser planes, donning their characteristic blue and red paint jobs, flew in formation for one last time after a long career of escorting massive airliners and closely monitoring their performance while alerting even the slightest anomaly. A Boeing representative commented on their importance, quote, the T-33s have supported many flight tests for Boeing over the last four decades. They served as the safety chase planes for the first flight of nearly every new and derivative Boeing commercial airplane, starting with the 767 in 1981 through today's 7779. Although very far from combat scenarios, the two shooting stars were crucial in making worldwide commercial aviation safe for millions of people and detecting any flaws early in the process, a feat that has undoubtedly saved thousands of lives through the decades. They also captured thousands of photos and videos of flying Boeing aircraft, materials used in developing the modern airliners of today's world. Bay of Pigs Invasion As harmless as their trainer and chaser roles have been, the T-33 has been used in active combat assaults on at least one occasion, but not by American hands. In April of 1963, the CIA orchestrated and conducted a disastrous invasion of Cuba, which aimed to overthrow the Castro regime on the island. The whole venture relied on a group of about 1,400 Cuban patriots performing an amphibious landing on the Bay of Pigs then holding off the 32,000-strong Cuban army long enough for the population to rise in arms against Castro. If the operation had the slightest chance of success, it required the complete destruction of Castro's small air force before the landings. But President John F. Kennedy, fearing the diplomatic consequences of a botched assault, decided not to send combat aircraft to raid the Cuban airfields as he had promised. As such, the attacking force, known as the Cuban Brigade, only managed to destroy a limited number of Castro's warplanes, leaving the dictator with two B-26s, two Sea Furies, and three T-33s. Ultimately, it would be the T-33s that would make a difference. At midnight on April 17, 1961, the first CIA agents landed on the Bay of Pigs Beach to mark the place of the landings. But what was supposed to be a deserted, desolate beach was covered by coral and was the site of a large beach party. Even so, the assault could not be undone, and the Cuban brigade began to land, supported by a few American warplanes. At dawn, Castro's air force attacked, led by three T-33s, heavily armed in a makeshift fashion. Action The agile jets immediately shredded through several landing troops and managed to sink three of the brigade ships. Such ships held most of the communications equipment ammunition, and supplies, leaving the Cuban Brigade wholly depleted. U.S. warplanes were ordered to perform only support roles, but even so, half of the B-26s were shot down by the T-33s and forced to retire. The following day, in a desperate move to prevent the Cubans from finding out about the affair, CIA agent Richard M. Bissell Jr. recruited several American volunteers for airstrike missions that could allow the U.S. forces on the beach to withdraw. Nevertheless, the six B-26s that flew to Cuba were met by fierce T-33 fire, forcing them to escape after dropping just part of their payloads. Three U.S. aircraft were shot down, with some of the crews surviving just to perish in a subsequent gunfight on the beach. 
the U.S. made no further efforts to support the Cuban Brigade and the CIA agents among them. Cornered and depleted, the remaining force surrendered on April 20th. As humiliating as the operation had been, one thing was clear. The T-33 trainer aircraft was one hell of a fighter. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. For more exciting military content, click on your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels, where we delve into the fiercest battles in modern history and the groundbreaking technology behind them. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Stay tuned.